in this screen capture I want to show basically how easy it is to uh, use uh, Mirt Connect. Mirt Connect is uh, an open source product from uh, a company, Mirt, and uh, it's used extensively in uh, in hospitals throughout the world. In this example, um, I have a uh, pre-configured MySQL database over here called HL7 Lab with a single single patient. A uh, single patient table. Let's delete all this and I'll quickly show you the schema. So now okay we have name, surname, age, address, practice, GP and email. Uh, nothing special over here. So that table is empty. No, no, no. I also have an HL7 sender over here, and there are a couple of sample HL7, HL7 messages. And the objective is to get these into the MySQL database, and that's where Mirt Connect comes in. Mirt Connect is a service, a Windows service running in the background, as you can see over here. And what we're going to do is define a connector. So what we'll do is we'll open Mirt Connect and this is the dashboard. First thing we have to do is create a channel. So let's do that, let's create a new channel. Let's call it my demo one. Let's say that the data type inbound is going to be HL7 to version 2, we can use version 3, but in this case version 2. And as you can see over here, we can we have a couple of, of options. I'm not going to change them because they're actually correct, but you can change the segment delimiter and so on and so forth. So for now that's fine. As a source, I'm going to select a TCP listener. So Let's leave it on 661, it's an MLP. Actually, all this can be left as, as default. Let's make a destination. Now, as a destination, I would like a database. As you can see over here, I can use MySQL or I can use a SQL server. Both of them work. Um, so let's use MySQL in my case. Let's insert, and I just need to change the host to localhost port to Two three zero oh, six. This would be HL seven underscore lab root and super secure password. <coughs> and I want to generate an insert statement. So insert. Let's get the tables. That's my patient table. And for example, I would like to include a name, let's say the address and the practice, okay? We could have selected them all, but for the purpose of this demonstration, that's enough. So let's generate. Now we need these values over here. We need to insert them. I do have a bunch of predefined messages, message ID, raw data, transform data, but I need to parse my own. Eh? And that is where transformers come in. So let's grab a transformer. Now this is super easy. I just need to go into a message template. And as an inbound message template, let me grab one of the sample messages, like that, and paste it there. Uh, that, that worked pretty much it. Now I go into message trees, and over here I have stuff populated. So for example, Let's say I would like to use, let's see, where's the name actually, where would the name be? Hmm, can't see, right. okay, let's, let's look at the message trees, okay, so patient identification, patient name, given name, blend, okay, so what I need to do now is try to click on that, Map to variable. Okay, so let's give it a better name than that. So patient name, and that's about it. Now, 
let's do something a bit more interesting so for example the care address would be this right meridian surgery so let's copy that let's go back to message tree let's paste it and it automatically finds it for me so this would be pd1.4 okay meridian surgery so if i now map to variable it creates a new one primary care provider name now what i would like to do is so let's go back to pid1 pid4 what i would like to do is concatenate a bit of um, values okay so for example let's say i would like to also see mm, is there anything interesting here doesn't seem to be much okay here we go so let's go into that right so i will do this now this is javascript so i actually basically to do a plus like that um possibly something like that actually uh, is there anything else that would like to do yeah other having new so let's drag and drop put in another plus put a space between them and that okay and finally the address so the address seems to be this metric place so let's do that let's go back here metric and there we go street address metric so let's map the variable again and street address should be something like that now once again so this pid11 i think i probably should concatenate so let's take that away ID 11, patient address, street address, let's go, um, yeah, let's do this, let's make a plus there, and possibly the city, yeah, let's do the city, so city, plus, plus, and that should be it, now, let's go back to the channel, and there are our mappings so what i need to do is again click and drag there click and drag that's the last one there and click and drag there good so let's save our changes let's validate the connector cool and let's go back to our channels so this is enabled, all I need to do now is deploy my channel. If I go into the dashboard, I should eventually see it deployed. Okay, now hopefully, if I copy paste one of these, let's copy paste that one there. I've set this going to uh, send to local host port 6661, which is our connector, and we should send a start. Uh, okay so that seems to have sent if i go back to nerd connect it should eventually over here show that it sent one message so if we wait a couple more seconds we should see here we go sent one uh received one over there so doesn't seem to have had any errors a quick way of checking would be right click view messages and over here i can see what my messages were so the raw message was all this this was the encoded this was the response i sent back and the important thing is in destination this was what i sent to my database and the response was right success so if i go here and we run this there we go we should see our very good there we go and um, just for you guys to know this thing is extremely uh, flexible so for example as an input i can have a database reader i can set whatever i want and we can pull every here it's every five seconds but we can bring it down to every second right um 
so it is really really flexible um, and then the destination could obviously be um, a, a TCP sender to the PASIP so this has got to also be used to send that's about it